joint so we can kind of see what's going on. So yeah, so you can go ahead. All right, so let's go ahead, let's uh, have a place to start working. So do uh, make a new directory, mk, dir, no, all together, all together. Then just call it you know, Tampa, I guess, call it that. Okay, and get what, cd Tampa, cd says All right, so it's an empty directory. If candle does an ls, it's, there's nothing in there, it's a brand new thing. Or ls-a, dash al, yeah. Yeah, well, okay, there's nothing in there. Um, <coughs> So the first thing you have to do is you have to tell Git, hey Git, I want you to start tracking. I want, I want to turn you on so that when I start adding this stuff to this folder, you're going to start tracking it for me. So that's that first command from that last slide was git space init. But basically it says, all right, I've created a new empty repository there. It's got a dot in front of it, which means if Kendall does just an ls, you're not going to see it, but if she does an ls dash al, it's a hidden directory, but it's there. This is where all of the git metadata gets stored. This is where commit objects get stored. This is where information about remote servers gets stored. Everything gets stored in this one directory. Unlike SVN, uh, I'm gonna, you know, a lot of people use SVN, so I'll compare that a lot. When you create a repository in SVN, you get a dot SVN um, directory in every folder of your site, which really sucks when you have to move that site somewhere else, or you want to take the version control out, or you want to switch version controls or anything. With Git, it's very clean, one folder, one place. If you ever want to get rid of Git, you basically just delete this folder, and wherever your code is at that moment, that's where it's going to be. Um, so git init is probably one of those commands I use the least. Because literally, I'll, I do it once for a project, and that's it. Um, and it doesn't do much other than kind of says, here you go. There's an empty file. Start doing stuff. Um, conversely, the one command I use more than any command is git status. And I tend to use this in between every other command that I do, just to make sure. So if you're going to do git status, it gives us some information. Um, the first thing it says, which branch we're on, on branch master. By default. If you just install Git and you don't make any tweaks, by default, um, whenever you create a repository, you're going to get one branch, and that's going to be called master. Think of it as like the trunk for SVN. But it's not really like the trunk, but. Um, so it says, all right, you're on branch master. Um, the initial commit, there's nothing to commit. There's nothing there. There's nothing to do. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to create. Let me just Yeah, okay, so we're going to create a new file. So if just I type edit, and then space, name of the file. Just you know, file1.txt, how about that? Okay, so it opens up my text editor. So Kendall can add a line of text, or if you want. There you go, and command S and command W. We'll close it up. All right, so now we've created a file. Um, now do an ls, just so we make sure it's there. All right, so it's over here. So now let's do a git status. All right, so. If there is it's untracked files. Oh, it's really light. I didn't see it there. Yeah, it is there. Jeez. OK. Um, so git is basically telling us, well, there's a file here. I'm not tracking it yet, but you might want to do something with it. And it basically gets really good to telling you, to kind of giving you a hint for the next step. So it says, untracked file. Use git add file name to include what will be committed. So if we do git add file one.txt, doesn't look like anything happened, but if we do git status, now we have changes to be committed. New file, new file, file one.txt. All right, so what happened there? We basically we put something on what's called the stage. Okay, so unlike SVN, in git, there's this idea called the stage of you take some changes and you put them on the stage. And when you're ready, then you commit them. It's literally like a staging area. That's obviously why they call it a stage. But what actually happened, all right, so here's where we're going to get the first going. So. All right, so master. All right, so who's 
going to be our first repository. <laughs> Yeah. You're the closest. Okay. Okay. All right. So there's an empty repository, right? Mm -hmm. Somebody give you all the stuff inside. And that's what we have right now. So I'm just going to get a bunch of stuff now. So I'm going to get a bunch of stuff now. which is the stick. When you do a git add, what that actually does is it actually makes a commit. It just doesn't put it on our master branch. So hold up on those little, the little circles. The circles are going to represent commit, commit objects. So when we did that git add, we actually created a commit object, but it's not on the branch yet. <laughs> <laughs> so if we wanted to, we could take it off the stage. And then actually just say, yeah, so we could do git rm, and we're not going to do this, but if we wanted to, we could unstage this file. And what does unstaging a file do? It basically deletes the commit. Um, but we don't want to do that. We actually want to make this commit. So we're going to go ahead and do uh, git commit dash m, and, and as in, yeah, there it goes, uh, space symbol quote. And then we want to give it a message. So we can just say initial commit. And then hit enter. Okay, so what happened here? It says one file change, one insertion. This is basically means we added one line of text to that file. No deletions. Uh, create mode, that's some, just some permission stuff. So if we do get status again. That's oh, spelled wrong. <laughs> there you go. Um, on branch master, nothing to commit, working directory clean. All right, so what happened? So we actually, when we did the commit, we actually put our commit object into our repo, and because we're on branch master, master is just a label, okay? The name of a branch is just a label. So we're gonna stick that label on that commit object. I think you should stand up here so that you can stand up, yep. There, you wanna sit here? I wouldn't go too far out of your way because I forgot to charge the battery and I didn't bring my power with me. So. Okay. All right, so this goes on top of here then, right? Right. Okay. All right, so we have a repository with one commit labeled master. Um, now, the other thing to know is that since we have this project checked out of the repository, um, the current status of the project is, has a special name, and that's called head. And that's just another label. So that's what this little sticky thing is. These guys, the head often refers to the tip of the branch as a master. So there's a lot of concepts going on there, but we're going to keep going and see where, where we're going with this. Um, all right, so let's look at uh, git log, L-O-G. So this tells us what's happened. So this basically says that um, on Thursday, April 5th at 6.50, I did an initial commit. Um, each commit has a unique ID, and it's this crazy long thing up here. Um, and this hash actually is very important because it represents two things. It represents the parent of that commit, and as we start adding commits on top of this, you can kind of see how that works. You know, each commit is tied to the previous commit, which is tied to the previous commit. So that parent information is kind of embedded in here, as well as the diff information. So these are universally unique, meaning that this diff, I mean this uh, ID right here, is unique among all Git projects on the planet. So the chances of them colliding or of two commit um, IDs colliding is something like one in like you know six quadrillion or something. So we have more chance of like an asteroid hitting us. Because it's also tied to uh, the machine and the time and stuff like that. So 
So we're going to talk like Git log a little bit later, but Git log a little more depth. But Git log actually lets you look at the history. Okay, so. Do I want to talk about the parents a little more? I think I'll wait on that one. All right, so let's go ahead and let's make a change to that file. So let's go um, edit file1.txt and make a change, add another line or something. There you go. So then you, okay. And then just do uh, git status. But you're not on there. All right, so again, um, change is not staged for commit. So we're going to kind of go through the, we have to go through the same process. We've made a change. Even though Git is tracking that file, it will not automatically make that commit unless we specifically put that change on the stage. So this is where we, have, again, if you go git add file one.txt. Why is it added again? Yeah, if you commit, nothing's going to happen because um, change is not staged for commit. No change is added. There's nothing to commit at this point. There's nothing on the stage. So we have to re-add. Because don't think of it as adding the file. Think of adding changes in that file. And now we can do, so we did the add. So you actually created a new commit. So we have a new tinker toy. I don't even know what the, you should probably look up what those things are called. A no. A thank you. Does it have to be like attached over here? Not yet, not yet. Because all we've done is, all we've done is created it, but we haven't attached it. But when you do the commit, so git commit again. Oh. You forgot to do the M, so just. Okay, yeah, that's fine. No, git commit dash M. And then a useful message. Uh, yeah. Close your, close your quote. There you go. All right, so one file change, two assertions. I think there's an extra carriage return in there, which is why there's two lines. So what did we do? Well, we. Actually, we'll this. We added a new commit on top of the old one. And then git automatically just moves the label up here. So now this is head. And this is the tip of the master branch. So it's a, what's important here is that, can you do a git log? This, uh, or this hash right here, this unique uh, ID, it is dependent on this commit. So, like this commit right here does not have the entire information of the project. All it has, all this thing knows about is who its parent is and what is different in the file structure between uh, this guy and this guy. All it has is differences. So in order to kind of rebuild the whole project, you need to know where you are and the entire history below you. So everything is dependent. And that's one of the reasons why this Git is distributed. Um, everybody has a complete copy of the repository. But with SVN, there's one repository up in the sky. And when you make a change, when you do a commit, it immediately goes up into the sky to that repository. But with Git, whenever you're working on, uh, on a Git project, you have the complete history locally on your hard drive. And the reason is, is because these commit objects and these diffs are so, so small and so tiny and so efficient that it's not a big deal to have the whole history. Um, a lot of times, if a, if a project is 10 megs, the repository size might be 11 megs. So you have 10 megs worth of files and one meg worth of diffs, because it's, it's incredibly efficient. Um, right, everybody with me so far? Yeah. All right, because we're going to start branching a little bit, I think. We're gonna <laughs> Right, okay, so just to make sure, so the process, we make a change, we add it to the stage, we commit it, and we get a new node in our tree, branch. All right, so let's create a new branch. So to do that, well, let me give you an example of why we might want to create a new branch. Let's say I've got, you know, I have this code right here, everything's working great, but I have an idea for a new feature, but I'm not really sure how well it's going to work or if it's even going to work at all. Do I really want to start building on my master branch, make some commits, and then realize in three days, oh, that sucks, I have to revert all the way back down? Probably not. I, what I'd like to do is get a copy of my project off to the side, 
hack at it for a little while. If it works, great, merge it back in. If not, throw it up. That's why you might want a branch. So we're going to create a branch. And it's quite easy to create a branch. Get branch. What do we want? Uh, no? Nope. Well, that's fine. So what git branch without any um, arguments gives us is the branches that currently exist. So right now all we have is master, and the asterisk refers to what branch we currently have checked out. So only master exists when we haven't checked out. So we're going to do git branch, and then space, and then the name of our branch, so call it whatever you want. Be created. Okay. Okay, oh, there you go. All right, so let's do git branch um, again just to see the status. So now we have two branches, master and oak. Now, creating a branch like this doesn't automatically check it out. So if we made a change and committed it, we're still committing to master. So after you create a branch, you have to do git checkout, oak. Switched over to branch oak. So what did that do? Oh, so I should have had to call it, should have had to call it meta. <laughs> I can create another one called that. No, that's right. We're going to pretend that we know. So when we created that branch, all that did was create a new label and stick it on this commit as well. Because as of this moment, master and oak are exactly the same. There are two labels pointing at the same commit object. All right, so let's go ahead and make a change to oak. The Drupal meetup? Yes. Yeah, yeah come on in. Let's go. Hey. Drupal's on your next. Sweet. Yeah, I'm really prepared for this. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Do I want to edit the same one? Let's do another one because I want to avoid conflicts. But so, I don't want to. So just yeah, edit, flat to in order to create a new file, you still have to start with edit? Well, on my machine, yes, but you can, you know, if you're using Dreamweaver or whatever, it doesn't matter how you create the file. Oh, okay, so that's just, that's that's just your method. That's it's, just, just, it's just a file in the directory, so you could copy files over there in your... Yeah, you can copy, yeah, exactly. It doesn't matter, yeah. It doesn't matter how you create the file. Mm -hmm. All right, so um, we're on O, so let's do a git status. Uh, on track, so let's track, file two. Get that, there you go, sorry, I should say that. Very good, and just to get status again, because we can see now it's ready to be committed. And you know, it always tells us where we are. So we're still on oak. So get commit dash m. And what does that do? That message. Yeah. Uh, message. Yeah. We want to do a message. All right, so go to do a uh, um, git log real quick. All right, so this, is, so this is where that message comes in. So it's really helpful. Like, good commit messages are so important, but you don't realize it as you're doing it. Um, the guy who actually taught me git actually said, whenever you make a commit message, you're not talking about the who or what, because that information is in the commit. It's in the diff. But you're, you want to answer the question, why? So why did you make this change? Because um, that's going to be the most helpful when you start looking back at history. All right, so we made this to oak. So, so what does that mean? That means we have a new, a new commit. And I'm going to put it off to the side. And now it's over here. Should the head sticking out be? Oh, you're right. I'm sorry. Kendall, gold star. <laughs> because we have oak checked out, head is over here. So now we have we have two different things going on. If we do git checkout master really quick, then I do an ls. There's only one file there. Right? Mm -hmm. And if you want to, um, I think I have a pathfinder here. Yeah, this is set, yeah, that one. And then click on sites. Right here. Okay. It's touch screen. Right there. Oh, okay. <laughs> and go down to uh, to, no, no, there you go. Just one file. Now let's switch back to the terminal. All right, so when we did the checkout, what happened? All we did was move a label. This is now head, 
and now Git knows, oh, I have to only display what's in this commit. You know, file two happened here, but master doesn't know about it, so you know, get rid of it for now. So if we do, if we do git checkout oak, again, we, all we did was move this label over here. And if you go back to uh, Pathfinder, file two is there. Um, Would you be able to see this but like if you weren't working in the terminal, like you would close it down and you just wanted to look at your files, how would you see those then? If You're only going to see the files you that you have checked out at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. I mean this Pathfinder is, this is just a, a finder alternative on the Mac. So there's, there's no difference, just give me tabs, that's all. That's the only reason I use it. Um, it all depends on what is checked out in your repository. All right, so we're going to do. Any difference if you're working on Linux? No, no, exactly the same. All right, so let's do. Um, let's look at the history a little more, and we can do it two different ways. So this is the longest thing you're going to have to type. So I'm going to put it here. It's a big one. Get log right there. And it's got one, two, three, four, five, six sign up switches. So git log, as we showed before, shows us the history. But it has a graph option, it has a one line, it shows us all, meaning all branches. Abbreviate the commit, just makes so we don't have to see all 38 characters of this. Um, usually, the cool thing about these hashes, usually the first six characters is enough to be unique for most of the world. <laughs> I mean, it's even rare to have a collision with the first six characters. Um, and decorate, well, so go ahead and enter if that's good. Oh, two dashes. They should all have two dashes. Oh, sorry about that. Up there. Yeah. What? Oh, well. She's going to retype all the dashes. Yeah. Fast type. Can you misspell one line? Oh, uh, yeah, on all three. One line. Yeah, one line. Two eyes. It's like me. No. Your eyes have an open cuddle. Okay, okay, go back to the <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> Keep deleting backwards. Back, back, back. Yeah, back. Okay, no, you gotta go back. Yeah, there you go. Back. Back, go this back. One, no, no, no. This one says dash, abbreviate. Oh, no, no, you're fine. Space, uh, dash, dash. But you have, you have one zero. Line. Yeah, one line. No, she's fine. She's right. She's on one line. No, we're on one line. The switch. There you go. Everyone oh, happy? Oh, sorry. Yes. Cool. There you go. Okay. <laughs> All right. So what does this do? This kind of just gives us, you know, each commit is on one line. It tells us where the master branch is. So the master label points to new line, uh, which I think was file new line in file one. And it says the head is at this commit, and the oak branch is also on this commit. Um, so that's that's nice, but. And you can shorten this, you can create a little um, alias. Thank you, alias. Um, <laughs> so you don't type on that. The other way to do it, um, well, there's actually two other ways to do it. Um, if you type git k all together, and this works on most, most systems, hit enter. Yeah. So this opens up this thing down here. So click, click uh, no, this thing down here. So this opens up this kind of viewer. And so this shows us our three commands, and this is where the Tinker Toys come in. You can see what we're dealing with there and our labels. And if you click on each one of those, you don't want to zoom in too much. Yeah. So yeah, if you click on one of those, it actually shows you, if you scroll down, here's our diff. Let's see. Um, yeah, yeah, well, it looks like it thinks that we deleted this and then add the same thing. That's just a, a diff issue. But we actually added this, you are awesome. So it's just a nice pretty little viewer. It shows who made each commit, when they made it, um, and you can search by, you know, um, the log message in here. So that, that's kind of handy. Um, so we're going to uh, command Q. Oh, yeah, please. Uh, 